morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning, and hello, kids, and welcome to Season 4 and Episode number 383 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah! Today, recording day, is... Is it, Mr. Grizzly? Thursday. Thursday? Yes, Thursday, May 16th. Beaver Sweetie's birthday eve. Oh, it's gonna be a happy day. Family's coming for the weekend as well, so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a lovely time. And of course, uh, night before opening night, dress rehearsal night. So, who little nervous, little nervous. Uh, yesterday's uh, rehearsal was very, very interesting because um, uh, I made myself uh, some crib notes. So we, um, actors, sometimes what they'll do is they'll go through the entire script like this, and then they'll make themselves a script with only like their lines highlighted mm-hmm. somehow like this. And then, you know, what prop they need to have and whatnot to go in and out and all that type of stuff. And, uh, so yesterday I, I had mine and I was looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, and I'm using it for the first time. And I just got completely lost on my notes on the first page and a half. So I missed two entrances for God. <laughs> but, but I picked it up. I picked it up by the end of the first act. I had it all like this and I didn't mess up again, but I'm just like, going like, Oh my God, I'm screwing everything up. <laughs> it's like the people in the booth must be wondering what the hell happened to him? Where is he? <laughs> mm. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, leaps and bounds progress from the night before. So, uh, yeah, tonight is a uh, dress rehearsal with a invited audience. And then, uh, yeah, and then we open for two nights only, and uh, the family will be coming to see this one. Cool. Uh, Kit Michael's asking, which one is this one? It's uh, Arsenic on Old Lace. Uh, so it's a, com- a, a farce, a comedy. Uh, and it'll be at uh, Domino Theater. It's not a Domino show, but it will be at Domino Theater Friday and uh, Saturday, uh, 7 p.m. are the shows okay. that are open. And we're doing a Saturday matinee show for the Senior Center that uh, they've uh, like rented it as a block. So, um, yeah, pretty exciting. And uh, we got to go on community TV. Cool. We had a little interview for the community TV show. So uh, uh, I don't know if I'll be able to, to find a, a clip that, uh, that we can show in some, uh, somehow, somewhere. But, uh, yeah, it was kind of fun. I haven't been in a TV studio in forever. So that was, uh, I don't know. I'm like. I'm on maybe the 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 J list, <laughs> celebrities in Kingston. <laughs> ah, that's fun. Okay, uh, a big thank you goes to our podcast funding sponsors, the Pepper Master, the Miss V Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. dot com. Ah, Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health today, sir? Well, sir, um, that's a good question. Um, well, you know, I, hmm. I've been struggling with a few things lately, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, 
when my friend passed away. Then I found out another friend passed away. And then, you know, the whole contract thing. And it, it's, it's a lot of stuff on the plate right now. Yeah. All things being equal, I'm, I'm not doing terribly bad, to be honest with you. But um, add, add into the uh, <clears throat> mix, the, the as I've been talking about, I know people are sick of hearing it, but the allergies are just kicking my ass right now. You can hear it in my voice. Um, it, it's, it's, it's just a tough time of the year. I know it's only temporary, but I'd like to get over this, this, this hump and get on to the good part of yes. spring and summer, you know, cause it's, it's like, oh man, I just want to enjoy the weather. You're in your six year old in the back of the car. Are we there yet? Yeah. It's kind of, that's the state I'm in right now because <laughs> you just feel like physically like crap all the time. And right now my back is just messed up horribly. So it's just, it's a, it's not one thing. It's 20 or 30, you know? Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I hear you. I hear you. Oh boy. Well, I I hope it's over soon. <laughs> Me too. But you do look better than you did yesterday. Yesterday you were looking red and puffy. So, oh, that's good. Yeah. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Kit Carol, allergies really are brutal. Pollen is everywhere. Yeah, it's bad this season. It's, yeah, and plus, you know, we're getting it, uh, you know, earlier and earlier starts. Yes. To the season. So, yeah. All right. Yes. Mohan, the weather's causing all the pollen to happen at the same time is what I've heard. Yeah. Right now, today, pollen is very high. Yeah. For birch, um, oak, moderate for pine, fir, and spruce. Mm -hmm. Everything else is very high. So, yeah, it's going to be a rough day. One of the things about my job is that I work in an office now, but there was a time when Many, many years ago, throughout the, throughout the 90s and into the mid-2000s, I was climbing telephone poles outside or sitting at pedestals outside doing work for uh, various telcos. And this was the time of the year that I dreaded for a number of reasons, one being the allergies, of course. The other being when you had to access uh, equipment in the back of somebody's yard and they've had a dog and they've not cleaned up after that dog all winter. Oh, Lord. Yeah. I walked into one yard. I looked at it. I turned around. I walked away and I just said, I'm not doing it. My colleague's like, you have to get in there. I go, go take a look. You do it. He walks in. He goes, nope. Went right to the boss and said, we're not going back there. Boss comes and looks. He goes, nope, that's a health hazard. I'm like, yeah, you think? <laughs> yes. You think? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. All right. All right. The news. Uh, again, coast to coast to coast wildfire update um almost seven thousand people have left fort mcmurray alberta wow. the latest fire is about five kilometers away it's traveling along the same path as did the beast in 2016 as we mentioned a bit yesterday some people are waiting uh the waiting it out at an rv park in lac la biche which is about 300 kilometers south fire officials are cautiously optimistic however uh, because winds are expected to blow the fire away from the community there are 117 firefighters and 21 helicopters that are all working together, dropping water on the flames and creating fire breaks, trying to contain it. Uh, weather forecasts indicate that there is a chance of rain in the area in the coming days. Uh, favorable weather conditions are also offering some relief to emergency crews battling uh, the blazes on the outskirts of Fort McMurray. Uh, I think that's the same one, right? Yes, same one. These are two different times here, uh, these notes that I gathered. So there's four neighborhoods in that city that have been evacuated. Um, so of those 7,000 people. But there are people uh, in other places of Fort McMurray, apparently. The, um, I guess maybe because of past experience. But uh, there's people from other neighborhoods that said, yeah, you know, we're, we're out too. So it's not just the people who have been uh, given the evacuated order that, are, that have left. Others have left as well. So, you know. There's, there, like I said, there are people that are having all the feels all over again, right? 2016 was not that long ago. Um, winds are pushing uh, the fire away from the city. That's a good thing. This is uh, Sam Sampson who works, uh, I'm guessing, with one of the, the wildfire services. Um, he says, winds are pushing the fire away from the city. That's a good thing, but it's still classified as out of control, and it's quite a large fire. It's more than 200 square kilometers, 
and about 6,600 people were ordered to leave their homes. But we do know that crowds and crowds of other people have left Fort McMurray, even though they were only under an evacuation alert. They didn't have to, but they left just out of precaution. And there's no exact timeline for when people who have been ordered out of their homes can actually come back. So uh, uh, and the fire chief says that people should be prepared to stay away from their homes at least throughout the, the May long weekend. Uh, in British Columbia and the Fort Nelson area, there's 4,700 people out of their home, but there's a low pressure system that's expected to bring some relief there as well. Uh, fire crews are reporting that the blaze appears to be stabilizing. Uh, at least that's the case for the Parker Lake fire uh, is, is also holding. Uh, the larger fire, I think it's the Patriot Creek fire, uh, now covers more than 700 square kilometers, however. Uh, the region's mayor is saying that the second fire could complicate plans to bring evacuees back home anytime soon. And uh, I didn't uh, hear much of an update, unfortunately, about uh, the one in uh, Manitoba uh, over the last few hours, uh, over the last day or so. So I have, unfortunately, I don't have anything to uh, to report. Uh, that doesn't mean that there isn't any. It's just uh, uh, I've been so, so busy that if I've been able to gather a limited amount of news, so it may just not have been there in the news that I consulted uh, to mm -hmm. make this show. So just uh, don't want anybody to, to think that I've forgotten about it or that uh, it's all gone because it's I, I just don't personally have any updates. Um, a big thing happened uh, yesterday as well internationally. Um, the Prime Minister of... Slovakia. There was an assassination attempt on yes. him. He was uh, shot five times. Um, in the he was at a government meeting in the city of Handlova. Uh, they're calling it an attack against democracy. Uh, they say that uh, a rise in hateful rhetoric is to blame because in uh, recent months there was a an election recently in Slovakia and uh, they elected a more right wing and pro-Putin government. So um, there have been protests because of policies implemented by the leader, who's also a populist. So um, this might have uh, some political undertones. They have arrested and detained a 71-year-old suspect. So... Um, I am guessing that we are going to get some information uh, about motive. Uh, he was, uh, the Prime Minister was brought to the hospital, Prime Minister Robert Fitzo is his name. Uh, he's now no longer in life-threatening condition, but uh, it took five hours of surgery. Wow. So uh, to get him into a serious but stable uh, condition. Uh, Poland's foreign minister, Radek Sikorski, says this comes at a time of political tension in Slovak politics. Uh, he says uh, Slovak politics has had its populist faces in the past, but politics has become very polarizing in Europe and beyond. Um, and uh, Robert Fitzo uh, is a, a leader who has been returned to power. Uh, so, um, and he has uh, been doing things like halting a military aid to Ukraine, moving to restrict the work of NGOs. And uh, there are, uh, in Europe, the whole European Parliament is uh, going to have an election next month. And uh, I think it's up like 12 of the 26 or 27 EU countries now have elected uh, some type of right wing uh, or of more right wing governments, including, for example, Italy, that is literally has a, a white right wing government. There's two or three nations, but uh, there's also a deal made in the Netherlands a couple of days ago with a couple of right wing parties in order to be able to uh, dominate uh, uh, Geertz Winters, or I think his name is, uh, is a, a name that would be familiar to people who follow this because he's uh, been trying to get this project done for the longest time. He's been trying to be prime minister, but he's decided to step aside in this attempt to be prime minister, to just to be part of this coalition and make it happen. And they're going to give it uh, to some person who's uh, considered it a little more, uh, less controversial than he is, but to try and realize the same goals. Mm -hmm. Not as much as a firebrand, uh, so um, yeah. There, are, there are there are lots of movements afoot. Let's put it that way, uh, Mr. Grizzly. Uh, you say that uh, you have some breaking news. For yes, us. I do. Breaking news.
For those axe the tax individuals, gas drops again in Newfoundland as drivers prep for Victoria Day weekend. Gas down 3.2 cents per liter. Prices down 10 cents in the last two weeks. In Newfoundland, where gas tends to be some of the highest prices in the country. How about axing the tax? What, why would you... Uh, what, I'm sorry. According to the Conservative Party of Canada, those that claim to be fiscally responsible, the carbon tax is raising the price of everything, but it's down 10 cents in two weeks. Well, that's... Reformulate that. Well, no, I'm just... By their, by their logic, that's, you know... Okay. But, yeah, it's not the carbon tax that's down 10 cents. No, 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 no. Gas is down 10 cents. Okay. They said carbon tax would increase it, is what I'm getting yes. at. Yes. But it's down by 10 cents. Yep. But Gas it was a 23% was increase, which was what? What was the actual? What was it? 3.3 cents per, per liter, liter or something. Yeah. yeah. But it just dropped 3.2 and it's down 10 in the last two weeks. Yep. It just dropped to, it just dropped to the price of the carbon tax. This year's yeah. increase. Yeah. Well, ex and yeah. below. Yeah, but just this week. Yeah, just this week, right? In the last two weeks, it's gone yep. below that. So, yep. uh, there's the CBC story I just put in the uh, in the chat. Speaking of fiscal responsibility, mm -hmm. oh, we a, shall we have a conversation? Smooth, Mister Grizzly. I right, thank you, sir. Right, thank you very much. Snaps. Shall we have a, a conversation about fiscal yes. responsibility? Yes. Let us have a conversation about fiscal responsibility. Well, from the Take CBC, a loophole leaves taxpayers picking up tab for MP travel. The uh, Commons picked up $84,000 tab for travel by designated travelers, often MP spouses. Here's where it gets interesting, though. Conservative MPs racked up 79% of the spending by MPs. They billed the House of Commons $426,283 to attend a caucus meeting associated with the Conservative Party's policy convention in Quebec City in September 2023, including $331,699 for travel, $71,408 for accommodation, and $21,053 for meals and incidentals. Conservative MPs were the only ones to bill Parliament for spouses travel to a caucus meeting connected to a car party convention during that time period. Conservative leader Pierre Polyev did not file an expense claim to the House of Commons from his MPs budget for travel to Quebec City. New Democratic Party MPs collectively filed the second highest total in expenses. They billed Parliament $83,000 and $83,087 to send MPs and a dozen of their employees to a caucus meeting associated with the party's convention in Hamilton in October 23, 2023. One of NDP leader Jagmeet Singh's employees charged an expense claim to Singh's House of Commons MP budget, but Singh himself did not. The Bloc, whose MPs are all located in Quebec, billed the House of Commons $28,943 for travel to a caucus meeting linked to the party's convention in Drummondville, Quebec in May 2023. Leader Yves-Francois Blanchet was among five bloc MPs who didn't file claims for travel to Drummondville. In a small number of cases, the expense claims filed by MPs from different parties included stops in Ottawa and other cities or tacked on other activities like language training. The Liberal Party is the only party recognized in the House whose MPs did not file expenses for attending a caucus meeting connected to a convention in the past year. Liberal House leader says that loophole should be closed. While a handful of Liberal MP staffers billed the House of Commons for travel from the riding to Ottawa at the same time, the party was holding its convention in Ottawa. The party did not hold a caucus meeting in connection with the convention. Most MPs were already in Ottawa at the time because the House of Commons sat the week before and after the May convention. Liberal MPs have billed the House of Commons over the years for travel to caucus meetings outside Ottawa that were not associated with the party convention. Government House Leader Steve McKinnon said the Liberal Party decided in the lead-up to its 2014 party convention in Montreal not to take advantage of the clause in the House of Commons spending rules that effectively allows MPs to bill Parliament for travel to party conventions. We knew that loophole existed, that caucuses were fine, conventions not fine, and that Liberals wouldn't play that game of conveniently scheduling a caucus meeting around a party convention. This is a loophole. I would welcome discussion around tightening or closing that loophole, and I hope that's what can occur. The clause that basically allows MPs to build the House of Commons for travel to party conventions dates back to November 2011 when the Board of Internal Economy, which oversees the management of the House of Commons and its spending, added a clarification to the rules that govern MP expenses. 
Hmm. Who was the government in 2011 again? Well, that would have been the Harper government. Oh, okay. Yeah. Under House of Commons rules, MPs generally cannot charge expenses related to partisan political activity, such as party conventions or fundraising events. MPs who have used House of Commons resources for partisan purposes, mm -hmm. such as filming political videos in their Parliament Hill offices, have been fined. Oh, House Speaker Greg Fergus was fined $1,500 for a partisan video in February of this year. So, you know, mm -hmm. we're going we're gonna to tell on everybody who has basically done the thing they shouldn't have done. So, you know, MPs can, uh, so, so, under House Commons rules, MPs, you know, they've been fined. MPs can, however, claim expenses related to national caucus meetings, which are considered part of their parliamentary duties. If a party holds a national caucus meeting mm -hmm. at the same time right. and place as its party convention, MPs, their employees, and designated travelers can charge travel, two nights of accommodation, meals, and incidentals to attend the caucus meeting, yeah. effectively subsidizing their travel to the convention at the same time. Right. The conservative party says its people followed the rules. It's a twofer. Yes. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> No, that's good. But I mean, like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's like, I'm it's bloody. Just, <laughs> so ridiculous. Oh my god! Is there more? Oh, there's more. Oh, I'd like to hear the rest. Tell me more. Tell me more. Like okay. Disney Avatar. So. <clears throat> The Senate prohibits senators from using Senate resources for a variety of political party events, including leadership events, but makes an exception for national conventions. Right. The 13 Conservative Party senators are the only ones in the now largely independent 105-seat Senate who belong to a political party that holds national conventions. Sebastian uh -huh. Skamsky, Director of Media Relations for Polyev, said Conservative MPs followed the House of Commons rules in Quebec City. He said factors like the size of a party's caucus and where an MP lives can influence the cost. Cost, well, of course. Yeah. There is an unavoidable difference for an MP that needs to fly from rural Alberta to Quebec City to attend a caucus meeting than an yeah. MP that drives from Toronto to London to do the same. Yeah. Skamsky, okay. Skamsky said that, unlike the Liberals, the Conservatives have often held their caucus retreats in Ottawa, resulting in no additional cost to taxpayers. Yeah. The Trudeau government is, this is a quotation from Skamsky, the Trudeau government is in no position to lecture anyone and pontificate on the subject after expensing over $1.3 million on so-called affordability retreats, which resulted in life becoming less affordable for Canadians, he said. Skamsky said the Liberal Party's caucus retreat in New Brunswick in 2022 cost the taxpayers $428,258. Some of it billed to the House of Commons and some expenses for staffers in the minister's offices and the PMO billed to those offices. Okay. Skamsky said the figures include $43,292 in expenses for MPs designated travelers. Oh, okay. <clears throat> the New Brunswick caucus meeting was not connected to a party convention. Skamsky said the Conservatives are not aware of any proposal to change the House of Commons expensive rules for caucus meetings. If one were to be brought forward, we would of course consider it and additionally propose changes that would ban taxpayer funding for luxurious Liberal cabinet retreats oh, outside of those held in government offices in Ottawa. NDP leader, House leader Peter Julian said holding caucus meetings in other parts of the country is a common practice for political parties. Of course. We had caucus events in Hamilton so that we could continue to do the planning work needed for the coming weeks, he wrote in an email. All of the House of Commons travel guidelines were followed and will adhere to, adhere to any changes to the rules made moving forward. Bloc Québécois Press Secretary Joni Riopel said the Bloc uses caucus meetings outside Ottawa, Ottawa to learn more about regional issues. Right. Bloc Québécois MPs reunite in caucus outside of Ottawa on the sidelines of conventions and other activities of the same type, and often organize tours to meet local actors and notably to discuss regional realities, she said. Mm -hmm. It all Back has the... the goal that elected officials be the most efficient possible in their work as spokespeople in the House of Commons. Yeah, the Bloc leader right now is on a two-day tour of Sherbrooke right now. Yes, exactly. Yeah. McKinnon, however, was sharply critical of the practice and said it wouldn't pass a smell test. Let's state the obvious here. They're not traveling to attend a caucus meeting. They're traveling to attend a national convention of the party, an intensely partisan event. They get caught red-handed, not only creating some bogus caucus opportunity, but also bringing their spouses 
and others along with them for the ride and charging up to taxpayers. McKinnon, who sits on the Board of Eternal Economy, that's the B-O-I-E, said the board should consider closing the loophole and conservative MPs should consider repaying the House of Commons. Jean-Vivre Tellier, professor of political studies at the University of Ottawa, said Parliament makes a distinction between the parliamentary and the political activities of MPs right. for a reason. But the House of Commons is also free to adopt its own rules. That's what Pierre got Pierre in trouble with the That's Elections Canada. Exactly. It was an election event and he wore a party polo shirt with the party's insignia logo when people are doing the election announcements and they're showing the big checks, but they have the party logo on it. Or, so, you know, the, the, you know, or you're know, the government of, K, uh, of Canada, regardless of the party stripe, and then you put on a big mm-hmm. check and you put it in your party colors or you put your, your yeah. party logo on. You can't do that. Can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> right? So this is stuff you can't do. Just like if you're going, if that's the difference you were saying like this, if you're have if you're having a, a convention and there's a caucus retreat and everybody is there and you're saying, okay, well, you know, we can all meet here since we're all here. Or okay, hey, everybody, let's all leave Moncton and let's all fly simultaneously to Ottawa so that we can be doing Ottawa work, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, I get that part like this, mm-hmm. but if you're having your party's convention, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That's party biz. Parties are considered independent organizations. So when it's party business, it is literally business mm-hmm. of the party, not business of the people. The people should not be paying for the business of the party. And that's why I get like, for example, when Stephen Harper had the, when we had the economic action plan and they had all those signs all over and they put them all in Tory blue and rather yes. than the white background again and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, that's what I'm, what I'm saying when I'm talking about misappropriating of public funds for party purposes, you have the duty to inform the Canadian public about what it is you are doing with their money Yes, as the government of Canada. Mm-hmm. And that's where they start to blur the lines. Well, let's, let's go back and reread that from jean vive Tellier. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I, the, the next paragraph mm-hmm. blends right into it. So jean vive Tellier, jean vive Tellier, professor of political studies at the University of Ottawa, said Parliament makes a distinction between the parliamentary and the political activities of MPs for a reason. But the House of Commons is also free to adopt its own rules. Mm-hmm. I quote, The decision is a bit surprising for me because I would have thought that there are maybe other priorities, other needs within Parliament that need funding, but they don't have the funding to do so. Tellier also questioned why Conservative MPs are billing the House of Commons for travel to a party convention, including by designated travellers, and the party coffers are well stocked. Like far and above. Yes. Probably it would be better for them to set the example and say, we don't go that way, we don't authorize that type of spending, she said. They have the money anyway to pay for the travel of people that they want their convention from the party funds. Mm -hmm. And when we add to that, the layer of the merchandising, the story that we brought to you before, Mm -hmm. where that is, does not seem to be, uh, when you click on the, when you're on the party site and you go to the merch site, it brings you to a site external to the party. So nobody knows precisely who gets that money. Is that considered a private enterprise? Is there a cost sharing or is there a profit sharing deal with the uh, with the party uh, and all that type of stuff? And how does that money get accounted for? Does that uh, way of raising money allow for dark money from foreign indeed to come in? How does it? So this party is swimming oh, yeah. in funds. Well, they keep. They literally, from... but they literally do not have to nickel and dime us for everything. Mm. They literally do not have to. They've got. It's. I, I'm pretty sure it's two to almost two to one. What they're out raising, I'd have oh, yeah. to go look that up. But but I mean, it's it, it's a lot. Well, so they really do. It's really true. They do not need to be doing this. They could be if. Uh, they could afford to take the high road. And when you're saying like there were some statistics in there that you mentioned. They can that, legitimately like, that, afford to do this. Yes. They still that, stick it to us. It blew my mind. Conservative MPs racked up 79% of the spending mm-hmm. by MPs. But they're the fiscally responsible ones. For travel accommodation and per diems. Uh, it's just, oh my word. 
79%. They're not even the government. No, they're not the government. Well, I mean, in, in what are they doing that they need to be spending that much money? Pierre Polly has built seven million three hundred and thirty-four thousand seven hundred and eighty-one dollars in twelve months. Twenty thousand and ninety-five dollars a day is what he billed the taxpayer. Twenty thousand, almost twenty-one thousand dollars a day is what he billed us. Yeah. Oh, no, twenty thousand. Sorry, almost twenty thousand. I sent you some graphics there, Mister Gruber. You did? Okay. Yeah, on the the link. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I have them. Oh, is this? Yeah, that's the one I'm looking at. Okay. You got both of them? Yeah, I got both there's, of them. There's also Leanne there. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring that up in a sec. So let me put these on the screen. Uh, and then there's a before and after I got to from like November till now to see mm -hmm. how much has gone up. Okay, that's what it is now. Yeah. Right. Uh, in November 2023, that $20,000 number was actually 18644 mm -hmm. Yeah, in November. And this is Leanne Rude, who um, basically used her well, government funds to be able to put out a Yelp review because she doesn't like uh, paper lids when she could, you know, use, uh, I guess, some of that expense cup money to buy herself like an actual reusable cup. And then she'd never have to worry about it. But uh, yeah, billed taxpayers uh, $593,416 expenses $44,951 a month but she gets a taxpayer funded salary of 194,000 600 yeah <laughs> these are legitimate expenses I'm like pure theft from banana pants so piss off uh-huh 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 sure 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 <laughs> <laughs> so they're not the government. Why are they sticking us with such a bill? Yeah. You're right, Dan. Campaigning. It's the permanent campaign. It's the US style permanent 24 7 campaign. Yeah. And we're financing all of it. Yes. Worst this part is, being, they have the money to do it. And you know what the uh, even worst part is? Jean Chrétien had fixed that for us. Mm hmm. Yeah. With that per vote subsidy thing. Mm hmm. Just, they're just, oh, man. Well, oh, yeah, Harper got rid of that too, right? Yeah. I think it was Polyev too, right? It, wasn't it in Polyev's um, fair election, or was it unfixed? No, the fair elections, yeah. Just before the financial crisis of 2008 hit, they produced their fall economic statement and they said all we had to do was a couple of things and one of those things was kneecap the per vote subsidy yes man oh man i'm just uh. <laughs> it's it's you know we're the party of fiscal responsibility if fiscal responsibility means fleecing the taxpayer yes yes you are you have the money to cover all of this, but you refuse to. Yeah. I tell That's you, man, this is wow. I um Greasy. I didn't see <laughs> uh, Yeah, indeed. Greasy. Uh <laughs> speaking of greasy, um not really political, but uh, we are having, uh, I don't know what it is with Canada and, uh, and crypto things, because we had Samuel Bankman yeah, Fried, yeah. and now there's this other guy, Aiden Platerski. Well, Bankman Fried's not Canadian, though. Was he not? But he no, was working no, out of Canada, wasn't he? No, he's no, American. Okay. He's American. Oh, okay. For sure. I don't, yeah, he's in prison he's in a U.S. Yeah. prison. He's, he's in New York City. Okay. He's from well, then, Okay. Then let me refer, reframe that, then. We have our Canadian Samuel Bankman yes. Fried. Yes. Aiden Platerski. Investors, investors had been trying for more than a year to track down more than $40 million they gave him. And we have videos of him in the, you know, private planes and luxury cars and, you know, one city one week, one city the next week and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, well, it turns out that uh, out of all the money he got from people, he only invested about 2% of it and spent about $16 million on himself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so 
uh, facing charges of fraud over $5,000 and laundering the proceeds of crime, according to Oshawa Courthouse. He was released on bail Tuesday with his parents putting up a $100,000 surety that he, will, that he will follow his bail conditions, according to court documents. Those conditions, including surrendering his passport, not contacting investors, refraining from making any social media posts involving financial matters, such as soliciting investments and not buying or trading cryptocurrencies. Petersky's associate, Colin Murphy, 27, has been charged with fraud over $5,000, according to Durham Regional Police. Mm. They had been charged following a 16th-month investigation dubbed Project Swan into Platursky. Durham police began receiving numerous complaints about alleged investment frauds involving him in July 2022. And, yeah. Well. He's been caught. He's been charged. And, uh, yeah. It seems also he has a... The, in, there was an associate that has been jailed for contempt of court as well. Uh, some guy who goes by the last name of Murphy. So, Was he yeah. attached to the law? <laughs> I like that one. Huh? Yes. Hmm. Colin Murphy, an associate of Ontario's self described crypto king, was previously sentenced to five months in jail for contempt of court in Oshawa in February. Wow. He was released uh, from jail in March, pending an appeal of his contempt of court sentence. He has also been ordered to pay the investor in that particular case $120,000 in liquidated damages by surrendering his 2017 Porsche 90S 2020 Ford F-250 and firearms for liquidation and sale. Guns and cars. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> Seriously. Yeah, no kidding. All right. Well, like I said, it takes all kinds to make world people. Well, this this is true. This is very true. I all just, right. uh, he, he fleeced a lot of people, and a lot of people suffered. I think they've recovered $4 million of the $40 million I think he's, he's uh, allegedly absconded with. Mm. Two mm -hmm. or four million they've recovered, but, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> um yesterday uh, just a development uh don't really want to go into it um but there's been a development in um and um the dina sharif case uh there was a, a second appearance in court um and i'm guessing that uh uh this is the type of thing that's done for, um, uh, you know, to see if there's a, uh, to give people time uh, to see if they can negotiate a resolution or a plea if they want to do that. And uh, to, um, because she was denied bail. So they, to, you know, mentioned that, uh, that she could choose to apply for a bail review before the trial. So I'm guessing it's to set that type of, uh, the, the, to decide those types of things. So it was merely housekeeping. There's still a publication ban, so that's pretty much all we know, and that the trial date is set for August 14th, 2024. Mm. Uh, so uh, I would suspect that uh, she has rep representation, that uh, they will take the steps uh, necessary to apply for a bail review. Um, of course, you know, they'll, they'll, it's kind of weird because we have like the Pat King trial, Mm -hmm. going on and we have this going on at the same time and you know pat king was originally denied bail she was originally denied bail um they're going to have to get i guess get bail, bail review to say yes you can and here are the conditions by which you're going to have to meet and then she's going to have to try to meet them somehow um i would probably guess that she is more likely to be able to meet those conditions than that king is. Um, uh, I, I, I think. Assume, I think, but I don't know. Uh, well, that <clears throat> king seems to have pissed everybody around him off. Yeah, well, for good reason. She, yes, but I mean, she, she within her community, she is she is respected. So um, I'm sure that uh, she'll be able to meet whatever conditions that that are there uh, to be able to secure it if there are terms that are given. Uh, I, I, I have no problem. Uh, I have no doubt about that. Uh, mm. But yeah, we'll see whether or not uh, what the bail review is and the, everything. That, but that's literally all we know. So uh, just developments. There's no way. Uh, 
there's no extra details about what the evidence is in the case yeah, or that type of stuff. So there's, all we know. so there's no no re, no need to speculate or discuss uh, charges, and because there's still a publication ban, pretty much only inflammation that mm-hmm. that is there is that she has a you know she's still in jail. She choose she can choose to apply for bail review, and the trial is set for August 14th, and that's pretty much it. If, um, right. so, so if anybody tells you that they know more that's going on than that they're trying to pull one over your eyes because yeah. literally that's all we got so that's all that's just, been released as, uh, yeah we got here off uh, the kit saying it's pre-trial before trial so it's just uh, yeah. like I said housekeeping orders and making sure stuff is uh, and, and to see if you can avoid a trial yes often as well that is which, case, which often yeah. is the preferred option yeah right why, why cost the taxpayer more money if you don't need to? Uh, yeah. in, in other news, but uh, sidestepping it, uh, splash pads are opening in Ottawa this weekend on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And the NCC Bistros are going to be opening up this weekend as well. NCCB? Op- the Bistros? Oh, the Bistros, yes. Yeah, they open from like 9 a.m. Mel to Ritz dusk. and all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah we, we had, uh, well, I met you at one last uh, June when we went to see Amanda Marshall. But yes. there was nothing on the menu you were able to eat, so we went yes. to street to Mando's. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally guzzled back a beer, which is never a good thing to do. I don't enjoy doing that because I like the taste of beer, but it's like, well, okay, we got to get over there quickly and get the food and then get to the concert. So and we made it in time. But then we get to the, it was funny. We get to the lineup and I'm like, here's my ticket. And then you, I can't find my ticket. I can't find my ticket. And the guy's well, like, in the future, but, just take a screenshot and that's good enough. Yeah. It wouldn't load up because all the concrete. It was yeah, like, yeah. And I couldn't get a signal. Like, I know. It's like, ah, hold on. <laughs> I'm running back to the front door. <laughs> yeah. Get a signal, pull it up. There we go. Here we are. It was kind of funny. Oh, my God. Well, it's less uh, about the concrete. Uh, signals travel really well through concrete, actually. Okay. It's steel that they don't ah. travel through. And okay. Because it's reinforced concrete and a lot of steel, steel structure. Yeah. Steel um, does does not really pass signals well. That's why you can have like a Faraday cage. It's, you know, anyway. Oh. I don't want to get into the, the boring tech aspect, but signals do not pass well through steel. They pass very well through concrete. <clears throat> of course, all concrete these days is reinforced, but it, how, how much reinforcement is there can vary from one building to another, depending upon the height, the size, the square footage, who built it, when it was built, blah, 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 blah. Right? Rebar, reinforcing bar. That's why they call it rebar, by the way. Reinforcing bar. That's oh. what rebar is. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Um interesting little bit of news i'm gonna this is not so much a news but a tidbit and um uh, you know every now now and then uh you hear on the news like the most popular baby names Mm -hmm. that type of stuff so um in the united states they released the most popular baby names uh and it seems like for the last five years the most popular baby name for guy for boys is liam and for girls is olivia for the last five years Right, uh, and it seems that between last year and this year, all the names on the boys' list were exactly the same, except for one. And now you're going to see why it is that I mention it. Coming in at number six this year is Mateo. Huh? Kind of huh? cool. Yes. Kinda cool. And in the Mateo news, we uh, hear that he's feeling much better, and that he's back to being his usual chatterbox. So, hey, Mateo, glad you're feeling better. Well, now, the better. reason. Why I'm talking about baby names was not only so I can give a shout out to Mateo, but uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, Danielle Smith posted something and uh, she said, my favorite post of every year, top Alberta baby names, if you'll put it up there, uh, Mr. Sure Disney. Thing. And then uh, in Canada, also similar for 2023, top baby girl names. Uh, Olivia, then Amelia, Sophia, Charlotte, Emma, Isla, Evelyn, Chloe or Violet, Ava and Emily, and Hannah or Hazel. And then top baby boy names, one, Noah, two, Liam, three, Oliver, four, Theodore, five, Jack, six, Henry, seven, Lucas, eight, Benjamin, nine, James, and ten, William. Top Alberta baby names. Hmm. Yes, and baby names. Except that, mm. unfortunately, uh, Mr. Grizzly, there's a little something interesting about Danielle Smith's boys list. Of course there is. If you will, uh, Mr. Grizzly, uh, show this next one. 
uh, what does the first one? Noah. Uh, no, but if you click on the, the first image, it'll bring it mm. up. And what does it say? Noah. Mohammed, no, this, including no, different, oh, top baby names, Alberta yes. in 2023. In, in 2023, Alberta recorded 47,263 births, encompassing over 13,000 distinct names. Okay, boys. Number one. Le Noah. Number two. Mohammed, including different spelling variations. Number three. Liam. Okay, go back to the previous image. Um, Number huh. one. Noah. Number two. Liam. Number three. Oliver, they skipped the actual number two. What, why, why do you suppose that is? What was, go back, go back to number two? Number two, let me see, what is that again? It's right here. Mohammed. Huh. Huh, now what's number 10 on the boys list here? James. What's number 10 on Daniel's, Daniel's list? list? William. And William is a derivative of Liam, which is yes. number two. Yes, yes. Yes. Or say Liam's a derivative of William. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it seems that uh, we don't talk about Muhammad. I just... Everything is she, adjusted, torqued. Everything is How, how pathetic do you have to be to do that? Like, how pathetic do you have to be? Oh my goodness! And where 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 was that from again? That is from um, <clears throat> uh, Y.E.G. Wave, which is Calgary Wave. Y.E.G. is the Calgary Airport name. Uh, it's, I, I just yeah, Edmonton. And then here's from the breakdown. <laughs> oh, from I, I, I like this one. R Rowan Sargent actually just posts posted cited Nate's tweet from the breakdown. I'm going to put that one because the comment is just perfect. <laughs> Let's see from Rowan Sargent. She reflexively lies. Daniel Smith, the anti-vax tinfoil hat convention with a bunch of not doctors is totes an official UCP event. UCP website. It totes is. It's like, oh goodness. United Conservatives, Alberta, strong and free. <laughs> an injection, injection of, of truth, truth, town hall. Town, an injection of truth. It's like, it's totally not our, it's totally not our event. It is. Come uh, to an, watch us lie about an event we call an injection of truth being one of our events. It needs a little bit more truthiness. <clears throat> or Stephen Colbert, truthiness. I just, these, oh my God, these people. Oh, it's just, I, I can't, I think I understand why it is that Creek Pete laughs all the time. I, it's like, somebody's like, are you telling me the truth? Yes. That's their yeah, shame. exactly. I am telling you the total truth. Believe everything I say. <laughs> it's just, well, I just thought I'd retweet just, her. I'd for retweet people you. listening at home, I'm shaking my head no as I'm saying, saying believe me. <laughs> I, just, I just retweeted you on that one. Danielle, you have some explaining, explaining to, do. to do. I mean. Don't get mad at me for doing the Ricky Ricardo voice. So, yeah, but she just, she does. She just reflexively. I'm just going to eliminate the name I don't like. The, the, the name that's not white sounding. That's what she did. I'm just. And Donna, Donna's right here coming in hot. I kind of, well, and I was looking at it going like, you know, I'm going to bet you. And when, of course, you pull up the other one, I'm like, yeah, that's what, that's what I was. I'm not surprised. I fully expected that. It's like shocking. And still yet not surprising. Not shocking, not surprising at all. Yeah. yeah. Well, shocking that someone would do it. Oh, yeah. Not, not surprising that if someone were going to, going to do it, it would be her. Yeah. <laughs> Just, oh, my God. Um, here's uh, another thing, Mr. Grizzly, that uh, made me very, 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 very happy. Oh, by the way, the funny thing about that is, isn't that the group uh, when we uh, – 
took, I think, the statue of Terry Fox or something like that, or the image of Terry Fox outside of the passport, were claiming erasure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She literally erased <laughs> the list. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There was a really interesting article. You know, when I'm talking uh, about talk to you about uh, climate change and the conservative hypocrisy, right? They keep on trying to get you to look at, oh my God, the carbon tax, the carbon tax, it's ruining your life. It's destroying everything. And you got the Bank of Canada that comes in and says, uh, yeah, it added like not even half a percent to inflation and yeah, you know, all this type of stuff. And I keep on talking to you about insurance. Mm -hmm. Right? They want you to get mad. Yes. About three cents, three point three cents more per liter a year. Meanwhile, the carbon tax insurance. I guess this. So that you don't notice. Yeah. For those of you those there's for those of us who can't, but for those of you who do, you who can, how much is going up by? Mm-hmm. I guess, and I'm sitting there and I'm trying to think to myself, you know, why is it that they want you to be mad about one but not mad about the other thing that's actually taking way more money out of your pocket? Oh, this, yeah. And it must be because, oh, well, let's just see, uh, because um, oh, I don't know, maybe they have no plans for that. Well, of course not. So they got to misdirect you. Um, there's also an article. probably heavily invested with some of those companies. So that's, that's merely speculation on my part. I have not a shred of evidence to back that up. It's just merely a pulled from the air thought that I put out into the ether. It, there very could be some funding related, right? So uh, yesterday, Correct me CBC, if I'm wrong. extreme weather causing billions of dollars in damage driving up insurance premiums, according to Statistics Canada. And that made me go, well, uh -huh. because I've been kind of waiting for something right. official that would actually confirm what it is that I have been saying. So according to uh, Peter Zimonik, from CBC, the increasing frequency of extreme weather events across the country has caused the sums paid out annually for catastrophic insurance claims to explode. And annual payments for last four years now rank among the 10 largest on record, says a new Statistics Canada study. And also, uh, recently, it has been confirmed a couple of days ago that uh, last year was not only the hottest summer on record since we've been keeping records, but they have scientific ways to go back and figure stuff out. It was the hottest summer in history of this planet. Mm. There's some context to bathe all of this in here. Quote, homeowners have been particularly affected by extreme weather claims with recent hurricanes, floods, and unprecedented wildfires, says the report released Wednesday. Insured claims costs were $3.4 billion in 2022 and $3.1 billion in 2023, each more than 50% above the yearly average. Wow. The report says that between 1983, the first year catastrophic insurance claims were tracked, and 2008, so between 1983 and 2008, that's 25 years, insurers paid out an average of $400 million per year. Wow. From 2009 to 2023, that 14-year period, that yearly average rose to almost $2 billion. That's a tremendous increase. <laughs> and insured claims in 2022 were $3.4 billion. So they've already increased by 50% from 2020. Uh, sorry, no, that, is, that includes 2023. Sorry. Mm. Sorry, my bad. That's I missed it, those numbers. Uh, these once in 100 year events are happening more frequently and are becoming more severe and more costly, the report says. The report also says that for almost an entire period from the beginning of 2020 to the end of 2023, homeowner insurance premiums in Canada have increased at a rate higher than inflation. Yeesh. So for the last two years, they've been trying to get you mad, carbon taxes and inflation, whatnot, and they've not said a peep. Of course not. About homeowner insurance premiums. Well, and, and something which are increasing at a rate higher than inflation. Something you said there, I think, will I'll bring up because it's pertinent to those of us who live in the na greater national capital areas. The the hundred year weather events. We had the hundred year flood, the once in a century flood. We had it in the seventies, and then we had two within a three year period, where uh, downtown Hull was flooded. Uh, uh, outline, Rockland, uh, outline areas, Britannia, all these places were flooded. 
twice in a three-year period, and they said it's only a once-in-a-century thing, but it also happened in the 50s, so less than 50 years apart, so twice in a century. But I guess, you know, we're in a new century now, so if we have it twice in a two-year period, a three-year period, that means we're good for the next 200 years? <laughs> mm, yeah, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Now, here's the thing that makes me happy because, kids, you know I love data. Mm. This is the graph I have been waiting for for years. One second, sir. Mr. Grizzly, if you would. I'm going to blow that up just a little bit if I can. There we go. Canada's inflation rate compared to home and mortgage insurance price inflation. Now, this here is the annual inflation for all of the items, this red line. This is what mm -hmm. Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives want you to be mad about. And mm -hmm. this is 20, January 2020, so start of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So the entire start of pandemic, war in Ukraine, all that kind of stuff, when everything's been going crazy. War in Ukraine didn't happen until 2022. Yeah, but it's included in this. Yeah, okay, okay. Right. Yeah. So all this stuff that everybody's saying, you know, like this, the conservatives are saying, it's Justin Trudeau, and Justin Trudeau is turning around saying, well, no, there's like climate change in the war in Ukraine, there was a pandemic, mm -hmm. and there was global shipping. Okay. So this is, all that stuff is this red number, mm -hmm. right? So annual inflation for all items in January 2020 at the start of the pandemic was 2.4. Inflation, we actually had a little bit. A dip. Uh, of like... I can't remember what the name of uh, the opposite of inflation. Deflation. Deflation. Yeah, deflation. Because a little bit at the start of the pandemic. And then inflation started again, rising all the way to 8.1% in June of 2022. Mm -hmm. And now... Rising, or dropping steadily for the most right. part. And now annual inflation for all in items, January 2024 is 2.9%. And I think the last numbers we had were, were still at 2.9%. At that point, I thought it was three point two, but but either way, it's it's hovering around three. The, the month before, yes, but now yeah. we're uh, we we went with we went below three in the the last numbers and the mostly the the most recent numbers that, that will come up in on the twenty first, I think. Okay. Now, the upline is your annual inflation for home insurance, January twenty twenty one. So at the beginning of the pandemic, it was already at five point five, mm -hmm. versus two point four for regular inflation. Mm -hmm. Now, nobody was complaining about 2.4 because that's between the, the 2 and the 3% 3 per, 3 Bank of Canada normal rate. So right. it wasn't an issue then. But this was already at 5.5. Mm -hmm. So long before this, right? It was way I mean, We started screaming when inflation was at 5.5. Mm -hmm. This was at 5.5 before. Yes. Conservatives have never mentioned anything. It has never been in a policy platform. Nothing. Not. Then we continue... It went down to 3.4 in May 2021. So at some point during the pandemic, it was a little bit below inflation, just for a brief period. Then it went all the way up sky high to about 9.7%. Inflation only reached 8.1, but your insurance is 9.7 at yeah. that point. Dipped below, again, regular inflation, when regular inflation went all the way up to 8.1%. This you know, home insurance one dropped to 4.9, which is still high. Yeah, yeah. Yes. but it's, it's, you know. And then since then, 4.9, June 2022, it's been going up and down like a roller coaster to where it was in January 2024, 7.7%. 7 .7%. So all that you're saving down here, mm -hmm. you're spending if you have any type here. of insurance, it's been taken away there and then more. Yeah. Right here. And the thing with these types of graphs, um, if you look at... The, um, I can't move the, the cursor, but if you look at all the valleys, mm -hmm. the low points on mm -hmm. the bottom, if you draw a line to try and connect them, that's up. Oh, yeah. yeah it's no, going it's, straight it's, up. If you do even that, the you draw lines. is still above. It's still above. Yeah. Yes. The closer that line is to a straight line up, mm -hmm. that's how fast it's rising. Yeah. So if you look at that line, um, I don't know what angle is. It's not exactly 45 degrees, but it's probably a good 20 or 30. Well, what, what was the, what's the lowest point there in, in 2021, January 2021? What was that? 3.4. 3.4. Okay. And then go to the next lowest point. Next lowest point was 5. And then the next? 4.9. And then the next? 5.5. 5.5. Yeah. So... It, it, we had a 7. very 7. minor 7. dip here in, in 2022. Yeah. So, but we've gone from 3.4 to 7.7 7 
between May 20. Period. So about a yeah, three year period. That's more nobody, than double. Nobody. It has about that. when Pierre Polyev says, "I like, goes your housing costs have doubled. Uh, housing price of housing has doubled." And we showed it. It didn't mm. when we did that to Pierre Polyev, Polyev is lying thing. Then rents have doubled, and then we showed it didn't. And then you know the debt has doubled, and we showed well why exactly it was. Because if you sit at home and if you got CERB, and if you calculate all the CERB that you got, mm -hmm. now imagine having to have borrowed all of that as a personal loan. The government of Canada did that for you. Mm -hmm. That's what they're upset about. They're saying you weren't worth that. Well, the conservatives are telling you to your face, you weren't worth that. And this. From 3.4 to 7.7, .7, that's a huge increase. Oh, yeah. Massive. Way more than 100%. Mm -hmm. So for something that's actually more than doubled, he doesn't want you to be upset and he never talks about it. But for stuff that actually hasn't doubled, he's claiming that it has. And he's claiming that one man did that. Yes. He's got no solutions for inflation, but he knows that that's coming down on its own. So, for example, if he wins the selection coming in, well, we're already between, we're already in the rate between two and 3%. If that keeps going down and interest rates start going down, we get one or two cuts before the election, but then he comes in, he gets the next two or three cuts. He's going to say he did that. Mm -hmm. uh, did I do that? <laughs> and he'll just be riding in the wake. Of course. Of, of all course the hard work that was done before that. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. But here's, that's what I'm saying. Whenever they talk to you about carbon tax, whenever they talk to you about inflation, about, how about how about my rising insurance premiums? No, 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 no. Don't, 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 look, don't look at that. Don't look at that. Look, look over here. Look over here and blame Trudeau for the carbon tax because that's Just, what's costing you more. When it's been proven time and time again, it isn't. Yeah. Despite those higher payments, Statistics Canada say insurance companies' profitability has not wavered significantly and is consistent with historical trends. The report says that returns on equity for the insurance industry ranged from 5.6% at the beginning of 2020 to 25.7% by the end of that year. In 2023, returns dropped down to the near-long run average of 10.1%, the report says. At the end of the day, insurance are, insurers are remaining viable only because premiums have gone up. So let me read that to you again. At the end of the day, insurers are remaining viable only because premiums have gone up. Insurance companies were one of those things like banks and casinos that you thought mm -hmm. you could invest in like this, and they last forever because the house always wins and the terms of insurance companies are always so that they end up with more. Period. Always. They never lose. Insurers are remaining viable only because premiums have gone up. That means premiums are going, the costs to insurers are going up so fast that they would go bankrupt otherwise. Mm -hmm. We need more base load. <laughs> Last fucking thing we need is more damn base load. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What it means is that homeowners are now on top of everything, feeling the pinch because of the severe weather events we are seeing, says Craig Stewart, Vice President of Climate Change and Federal Issues at the Insurance Bureau of Canada. The Insurance Bureau of Canada has a Vice President of Climate Change. <laughs> the Conservative Party of Canada is having a hard time admitting that it, that it exists. The Statistics Canada study focuses on personal property insurance, which the report describes as synonymous with homeowner's insurance. It says that despite the increasing intensity of wildfires in Canada, quote, flooding caused by heavy rainfall, hail, and hurricanes remains the most detrimental to homeowners, most significantly impacting the coastal regions of Canada. So for all the news that the wildfires have been getting, because it was all that rain out east, and then whenever we have one of those uh, atmospheric, um, oh, damn, rivers mm -hmm. that dumps a whole bunch of stuff. Flooding caused by heavy rainfall, hail, and hurricanes remains the most detrimental to homeowners, most significantly impacting the coastal regions of Canada. The report says other factors have combined to drive up the cost of insurance premiums, including labor shortages, the pandemic, and increased replacement costs. Because 
here we go, when we talk, talk about re increased replacement costs, this is where all the other stuff that's going on, the wars and the supply chain things, this is where it comes in. The report says that because insurance companies are responsible for rebuilding houses under current market conditions, they got to rebuild the houses under current market conditions. They are subject to spikes in the cost of building materials. In September of 2021, the year-over-year -year increase in replacement costs, lumber, wire, concrete, construction wages, and household items hit 14.4%. Yeah. So your insurance premiums are up 7.7, but the replacement costs is up 14.4. So the insurance company is the insurance company is actually taking a hit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just as overall inflation. So yeah, overall inflation has sat at four point four percent in September twenty twenty one, and the replacement of inflation was fourteen point four percent, ten percent higher. Craziness. Former Federal Environment Minister Jonathan Wilkinson's twenty twenty one mandate letter directed him to invest in direct reducing the impact of climate related disasters like floods and wildfires to make communities safer and more resilient. Stewart that said since then not enough has been done to ensure homes and other properties are able to withstand the impacts of extreme weather events caused by climate change. He said the fight against the impacts of climate change has to be about more than energy efficiency and emissions reductions. Quote the greener homes programs where they keep putting money into heat pumps, which is fine, but there should be funding available for folks that want to make their homes flood and wildfire proof. I concur. Mm. Yeah, A statement really from the Office of Housing Infrastructure and Communities Minister Sean Fraser said the Liberal government, quote, is making major investments in prevention, mitigation, response, and recovery to help Canadians face these growing challenges. The statement said that to date, 96 projects worth $2.5 billion have been announced through the Disaster Mitigation and Adaptation Fund, and another $228 million is being spent over seven years through the Flood Hazard Identification and Mapping Program. So it seems the federal government does also agree. It's just whether or not these are, uh, amounts are sufficient uh, for the need, considering how fast things are accelerating. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there you go, kids. You're a little more informed. Wild and crazy stuff. Facts first. Always, sir. Always. Facts See, first and then form your own opinions. But the, the, the facts, facts are never up for debate. Facts are facts. Facts don't care about your feelings. Yep. But yeah, insurance is... Uh, and again, where you can get it. Where you can <clears> get it. All right. Uh, Mr. Weasley, do we have a show? We do. All right, kids and cubs. Uh, before we go, do you have a couple minutes? Uh, yeah, real quick. I have a clip for you here that I wanted to show you, though. Oh, okay. Um, I sent you. A, did you not see the thing? I sent you a message. Uh, I did see something. Oh, there's somebody knocking at the door for some reason. Uh, yeah, go go ahead. Play the clip. Okay, I got this clip. I think this okay. is interesting. This um, this clip. Where is it? Here it is. This is, um, I guess, this was this yesterday? No, this was on the 14th. Uh, one second here. Uh, someone asked Justin Trudeau what, uh, if he's going to stay on as liberal leader. And, uh, well, here's what he had to say. I think this is uh, telling, to say the least. Hi. Laura Stone, Globe and Mail. Prime Minister, I want to ask you about leadership. Um, polls have put you 20 points behind the Conservatives, and it doesn't seem to be getting better despite your recent communications push from your, from your budget. The public appears to have an overwhelmingly negative view of you personally, and you seem to have lost control of the conversation on some of the key issues that, that Canadians care about. I think the public might be looking at you and your position right now and thinking for the good of the Liberal Party, why is he staying on? Thank you for your concern, Laura. Um, <laughs> but as you see, we're here investing in good jobs for today and for generations to come. The world is in a challenging place, absolutely. But that's why for eight years this government has been putting forward investments and a frame that both fights climate change and creates good jobs and economic growth, that understands that if you want to bring in strong investments and great jobs for Canadians, you have to be making investments in things like childcare, like pharmacare, 
like health care, investments in supporting our seniors, investments to make sure that young people get the best opportunity as they go off to post-secondary education. I know there are lots of folks in Ottawa thinking about process. I'm focused on results for Canadians. I'm focused on delivering the kinds of things that are going to set Canada and Canadians up for success over the coming decades. Because that's the moment we're in right now. A different government years ago wouldn't have made the choice to build an EV ecosystem here in Canada. Would have doubled down on the oil and gas industry and stayed away from anything that threatened the oil and gas industry. Well, we know that the pressure we're putting on the oil and gas industry to decarbonize and to invest in renewables goes hand in hand with our decision to invest massively in the electrification of our economies. Because we have the clean electricity here in Canada, we have the high quality manufacturing uh, workers, we have the social and economic stability that countries around the world and companies around the world are looking for. This is about building a plan for the future of this country. That's what we're focused on and that's what I will continue to be focused on because building a better future for Canadians, bringing in fairness for every generation, that's what I am 100% focused on right now. Merci. Well, <clears throat> sir, your cam oh, there you are. Your camera was off for some reason. That, I think that's a uh, <laughs> pretty straight-up statement from the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, I saw that, uh, that thing yesterday. And, yep, very well done. Very well done. Um, all right. Kiss, Cubs. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. So please tell your peeps and poops all about us. We really appreciate it when you do. If you would like to support us because you need a little bit more beaver in your life, uh, please make your way to our Etsy store for some merch, 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 merch. We have everything. We have key rings. We have cups. We have baseball caps, uh, all with a very stylish and beautiful True North Eagle Beaver logo as designed by our friend Ozzy Pete. So please uh, go there and uh, get yourself a little beaver in your life. And if you would like to make sure that you do not miss an episode, you don't have to. Thanks to the Ray Girl because she has sponsored our pod page. That's podpage.com slash the true North Eager Beaver lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And when you go there and click subscribe, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it will come directly to you. If you scan that QR code right, right under my chin, that'll bring you there too. And if you would like to help us in other ways, well, then you need to make like Kit Elaine and have a beyond awesome day, everyone. And remember to smash the button before you leave. And where you go to smash the button is the True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page. We have three buttons there for you. Like, share, subscribe, click one, click two, click three. Have fun. Go crazy. We love it. Oh, Kit Moan asks travel mugs. Uh, uh, yes. Yes, I'll come up with one. Okay, and Cassie says, any Lola merch yet? Yes, there is there's a, a Lola t-shirt. Yeah, a couple mm -hmm. t-shirts there. Oh, someone scanned the QR code. Yay! All right. Let's see, what else do we have? Oh, and if you would like to sponsor us in another way, um, you can go to our coffee page where you will find the Eager Beaver Lodge Emergency Hydration Fund, where if you drop a couple of loonies or toonies into that, you will help to keep us <clears throat> moist. <laughs> so uh we appreciate everything that you do if you uh, if you would you encourage us of course the gift of your attention is the most precious one to us so thank you very much um if you'd like to write to us true north eager beaver at gmail.com at true eager on twitter true north eager beaver on facebook uh leave a comment on our youtube page we try to read everything so thank you so very much we really appreciate it uh, when you interact with us and if you're listening to us on apple stars and reviews are very much appreciated 
and we appreciate you taking the time because democracy is something that you do. If you live in Alberta, please do get involved in some way in the NDP Alberta leadership race, especially if you have a candidate that you like. Uh, remember that uh, Gil McGowan has recently pulled out, so the race is now down to four. Mm -hmm. uh, get involved. It's the most exciting race uh, that there's been in a good long while. So, uh, get involved. And uh, if you happen to be living in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and New Brunswick, uh, why not look into uh, seeing if you could be a poll worker uh, for the upcoming provincial elections. Okay. And as always, um, you know, if you're at a time in your life where you might uh, think that, uh, why are they doing this? I could do a better job than run for something. Mm -hmm. We not? need you. Yeah. Okay. Ah, from the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying it could be a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, do you have any words of wisdom, sir? Uh, yeah, help us spread the word about the mental health walk coming up in mm. uh, June, June 15th of this year, when we uh, do a 5K walk uh, through Centertown in Canada's capital to raise awareness about men's mental health challenges and the lack of resources available to us. And not just the lack of resources, but effectively the inability for us to even open up and talk about it. Because, you know, we're supposed to be stiff upper lip and all, and boys don't cry and be a man and suck it up, buttercup. Walk it off. <clears throat> Walk it off. Yeah, when that's, it, that's not how it works. We've discovered this. So help spread the word if you can. June 15th, we'll have a design for you very soon. A logo. We'll, we'll, we're, we're working on something. We'll get it up as quickly as possible. It's just we're, we're working like crazy right now. So, But yes, please help spread the word on that if you could. We would really appreciate it. All right. Mr. Grizzly, please, as Michael would ask, cue the cock. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients Fill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. Now oh, we have the kids being cheeky. Mr. Grizzly, it gets sassy going. If the bank rates don't go down, I'll have to become a different type of poll worker. I saw that, yes. <laughs> and then I kit Michael uh, a little early on the cue of the cock again. <laughs> Premature. <laughs> uh, speaking of Kit Michael, Mr. Grizzly, for the Easter egg, uh, we have this with permission, but uh, there is a Kit Michael with his daughter having uh, graduated. Uh, I'm I know it's the University of the States. I'm sorry, I don't want to say the wrong, the wrong one, um, Kit Michael. So if you're here, uh, yes, I see you're on the chat today. If you could tell us which one, but uh, yes, I uh, graduated from an accounting program and is on her way to being a CPA. And uh, if you saw that picture, there's a proud papa. There's a very, very proud papa. So uh, we love, uh, we love that uh, beaverific news. So if yeah, if you have a uh, good stuff going on too, uh, uh, let's reduce some doom from our scroll. And uh, share some good news. We I've like got, that. I've got a, a good news story for you, real quick, and then I do have to go. I'm late. There you go. Methodist uh, University in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina. There okay, you go. there you go. From uh, at V Ducross, Val Ducross, I experienced the new Canada dental plan in action firsthand today. This was written yesterday. What I thought was just going to be a cleaning turned into uh, turned into a full exam and X-rays. Not only that, work to be done early next month. Can't wait for the work to be done. So the plan Ooh. is working. The plan is working. And Val, I don't know Val, but she lives here in Ottawa. So way to go, Val. Right on. Good for you. <clears throat> Thank All you right. for informing us because yes. 
we, we want to hear from people who really have experienced it. All right. I got to go. Right. I'm late. I really got to get out of here. Bye, everyone. I'll, uh, I'll see you.